Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Can President Biden legally forgive student loans by executive order? Today on the College Investor Audio Show, we answer that. Let's get right to it, shall we? So Senators Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren want President Joe Biden to forgive $50,000 in federal student loans per borrower. They claim that he can do this unilaterally through executive order. President Biden has promised to forgive ten dollars in student loan debt per borrower, but wants Congress to pass legislation to implement it. The $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief plan proposed by President Biden does not include any student loan forgiveness. Legislation to forgive student loans is unlikely to occur before the end of the summer, since payments on federal student loans are passed until September 30th of 21 anyway. Can the president cancel all federal student loans? Eh, The president does not have the legal authority to forgive student loans on his own. Only Congress has the power of the purse. Executive action can only be used when it has been specifically authorized by Congress. The executive branch cannot spend money that has not been appropriated by Congress. Per 31 U.S.C. 1301 in Article 1, Section 7, Clause 7 of the U.S. Constitution, if you would like to look it up yourself. (laughs) The claims that the president has the authority to forgive student loans are based on a misreading of the Higher Education Act of 1965. And I won't tell you where with all the sections and subheadings. That section of the Higher Education Act of 1965 provides the U.S. Secretary of Education with the authority to modify, compromise, waive, or release any right, title, claim, lien, or demand, however acquired, including any equity or any right of redemption. But that quote is taken out of context. The preamble to that section of the Higher Education Act of 1965 limits this authority to operating within the scope of the statute in the performance of and with respect to the functions, powers, and duties vested in him by this part, the secretary may. I love legal language. In other words, when Congress authorizes a loan forgiveness program, such as public service loan forgiveness, teacher loan forgiveness, or the total and permanent disability discharge, the U.S. Secretary of Education has the authority to forgive student loans as authorized under the terms of these loan forgiveness programs. Hmm. So without authorization by Congress of a specific loan forgiveness program, the president does not have the authority to forgive student loan debt. As the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Whitman v. American Trucking Associations, Inc., Congress does not hide elephants in mouse holes. (laughs) How's that for legal language? (laughs) In addition, The this part language refers to Part B of Title IV of the Higher Education Act of 1965, which applies only to loans made under the Federal Family Education Loan, FFEL, program. There is similar language in Part E of 20 U.S.C. 1087 blah 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 for the Federal Perkins Loan Program. There is no similar language for Part D for the William D. Ford Federal District Loan, Direct Loan Program. The Parallel Terms Clause in the Higher Education Act of 1965 requires direct loan program loans to have the same terms and conditions as the FFEL program loans. But this does not apply to the waiver authority because waiver authority is not part of the terms and conditions of the loans. Are you following me? I understand if you're lost at this point. It is a podcast. (laughs) I'll let you know how you can get access to all of this info at the end of the show. So here are specifically four situations in which a debt may be compromised. The borrower is unable to repay the debt within a reasonable period of time. Number two, the federal government is unable to collect the debt within a reasonable period of time, though enforced collection proceedings, such as wage garnishment and treasury offset. The cost of collecting the debt exceeds the amount that will be collected. And number four, there is significant doubt as to whether the government can win a lawsuit against the borrower. Okay, so even if the president could use an executive order to forgive student loan debt, which he cannot, by the way, these regulations will prevent the president from forgiving the student loan debt of borrowers who are able to repay their student loans within a reasonable period of time. 
Federal agencies are also required by the regulations to aggressively collect all debts. What about the payment pause and interest waiver? Didn't President Trump use this waiver authority to implement the payment pause and interest waiver, setting a precedent that could be leveraged to forgive student loans? Actually, as I hold up my index finger, he didn't. The August 8, 2020 executive memorandum referred to appropriate waivers of and modifications to the requirements and conditions of economic hardship de deferments described in Section 455 F2D of the Higher Education Act of 1965 as amended and provide such deferments to borrowers as necessary to continue the temporary cessation of payments and the waiver of all interest on student loans held by the Department of Education until... December 31st, 2020. The executive memorandum did not specify which waivers and modifications should be used to implement the payment pause and interest waiver. The definition of the economic hardship deferment allows the U.S. Secretary of Education to define new eligibility criteria, but this isn't necessarily sufficient since it requires the U.S. Secretary of Education to consider the borrower's income and debt-to-income ratio as primary factors when establishing new eligibility criteria. So the regulations provide a better solution since the regulations allow the U.S. Secretary of Education to provide administrative forbearance because of a national military mobilization or other local or national emergency. However, neither the forbearances nor the economic hardship deferment allow an interest waiver. To implement an interest waiver after the expiration of the CARES Act's payment pause, the U.S. Secretary of Education must rely on the waiver authority in the HEROES Act of 2003. This waiver authority allows the U.S. Secretary of Education to waive or modify any provision of Title IV of the Higher Education Act of 1965 in connection with a war or other military operation or national emergency as may be necessary to ensure that affected individuals are not placed in a worse position financially in relation to that financial assistance because of their status as affected individuals. The waiver authority provided by the HEROES Act of 2003 is sufficient to implement the payment pause and interest waiver, but not to forgive student loans. Forgiving student loans goes way beyond what is necessary to ensure that borrowers are in the same position financially after the national emergency as before the national emergency. In addition, the executive memorandum specified that this memorandum shall be implemented consistent with applicable law and subject to the availability of appropriations. Congress has not appropriated funds for broad student loan forgiveness. Can the president waive the taxes on student loan forgiveness? Well, the IRS considers the cancellation of debt to be taxable income to the borrower. This is interesting. This is required by the Internal Revenue Code of 1986. It's as though someone gave the borrower money to pay off the debt. Borrowers will receive an IRS Form 1099-C when their debt is canceled. Certain types of student loan forgiveness and discharge are excluded from income due to specific laws enacted by Congress. For example, federal student loan forgiveness for working in a particular occupation is tax-free when that loan forgiveness is provided by the student loan program. Death and disability discharges of student loans are tax-free through 2025. Employer-paid student loan repayment assistance programs, LRAPs, are also tax-free through 2025, as amended by the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2021. Other types of student loan forgiveness, however, are taxable. For example, the forgiveness of the remaining debt after 20 or 25 years in an income-driven repayment plan is taxable under current law. However, the IRS can forgive the tax debt of borrowers who are insolvent, where total debt exceeds total assets. The insolvency exclusion from income is limited to the amount of insolvency. Borrowers who are in an income-driven repayment plan for two or more decades are likely to be insolvent, but there are no guarantees that the debt will be forgiven. Nevertheless, the IRS used similar reasoning to make the borrower defense to repayment discharge tax-free. If broad student loan forgiveness is limited to borrowers, 
who are experiencing economic distress, the president could ask the IRS to forgive the taxes on the loan forgiveness, arguing that the borrowers are likely to be insolvent. Otherwise, the student loan forgiveness will be taxable unless Congress passes a specific law authorizing an exclusion from income for the loan forgiveness. So does student loan forgiveness qualify as disaster relief payment? Qualified disaster payments are excluded from income. COVID-19 does qualify as a national disaster under the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act, but there are only two types of qualified disaster relief payments that might apply, if you look at them sideways. <laughs> Amounts paid to or for the benefit of an individual to reimburse or pay reasonable and necessary personal, family, living, or funeral expenses incurred as a result of a qualified disaster. Amounts paid to or for the benefit of an individual, if such amount is paid by a federal, state, or local government or agency or instrumentality thereof in connection with a qualified disaster in order to promote general welfare. But, student loans are not an expense incurred as the result of COVID-19 pandemic, and student loan forgiveness is unrelated to the pandemic. Very interesting. Now, that was 11 minutes that could have been very confusing because of all the legal jargon. So, <laughs> please find this article at thecollegeinvestor.com. Just type in the words, President Biden, student loans. You'll find it. Thanks so much for stopping by today, and we'll talk to you again real soon.